This is Twit. The question of the day is, is he or isn't he? Is a 64-year-old Japanese-American engineer named Dorian Nakamoto the creator of Bitcoin? An extensive, heavily researched 4,500-word article in Newsweek by Leah McGrath Goodman says yes. Dorian Nakamoto says no. So which is it? Brian Fung is a tech reporter for The Washington Post, and he has been covering this story extensively. Welcome, Brian. Thanks for having me. Well, uh, now you've uh, you've done several stories on this, and 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 they're awesome stories. Uh, were you persuaded uh, initially by the Newsweek article? Well, uh, you know, looking at uh, the way that um, Nakamoto was responding to the reporter uh, reporter's questions, it definitely did seem fairly convincing um, in the way that he said, "I'm not uh, associated with." was that any longer. Um, it definitely seemed like he was connected at, at least at one point. Um, but uh, now in light of a lot of the challenges that have come out in response to the article, um, you know, that were, it's anyone's guess at this point. Right. Now, it, what's interesting about this story, and this is a rare moment in, uh, in uh, stories of this kind, where you have on the one hand, you have a very well-researched article, and it's very well-researched, uh, and uh, some really compelling arguments, some really compelling circumstantial evidence that uh, that this is the guy. And then on the other hand, you have very good evidence that he's not the guy. And, and there's been a lot of analysis and sort of uh, uh, nitpicking about the details on this. And among these are that, you know, uh, the, the, the Dorian Nakamoto character actually has a background that makes him, you know, he's got a background in math, mathematics. He's got a libertarian bent to him. He's, you know, there are many sort of circumstantial things around it that make it seem like he's the guy. On the other hand, his writing style has been analyzed and compared with some of the online posts by the actual creator of Bitcoin. And they seem to be very, very different uh, people, very, very different writing styles. And of course, you know, you and I are journalists. We know what a good editor can do. So maybe, uh, maybe he's the guy and he's been edited. Maybe he's not the guy. Maybe it's a completely different person. Uh, but it certainly is a, a, an interesting um, uh, problem. And, um, you know, I'm sure you've seen the, uh, the, um, the, the banter in, in, within the Bitcoin community. Um, you know, one, one group of people is saying, this isn't the guy. This isn't the, the, the right person. And the other, pers the, the other group is saying, it doesn't matter if this is the guy or not. Leave him alone. Now, do you feel like the media's coverage of this has been excessive and abusive toward, uh, toward uh, Sakamoto? Um, you know, I, I think you brought up the issue of, uh, you know, whether or not um, uh, Nakamoto has been edited or not. I think that's, you know, kind of an interesting comment on the way that Internet anonymity works. Uh, you, you know, kind of harks back to that old New Yorker cartoon, you know, on the internet, no one knows you're a dog. Um, it's, it's, it's remarkable how, uh, this has set off, you know, guesses and counter guesses as to whether Nakamoto is, uh, you know, truly Dorian Nakamoto or, or if he's someone else, um, you know, it could be that, uh, that, you know, Dorian's, um, uh, writing style, um, which has been compared, as you said, to uh, the, the writing style of, of uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, it could be that he's, you know, engaging in some deliberate obfuscation here, um, if he is, you know, in fact, the, the actual Satoshi Nakamoto. And if not, you know, that's equally likely. Um, as, as for, you know, what's happening on um, online with the, uh, the comments, uh, you know, I think, you know, both categories uh, uh, of, of commenters are, you know, there's some merit to what they're saying. Um, you know, what, what the media has done and, um, uh, uh, you know, in terms of covering the story and, and, you know, engaging in a car chase with Nakamoto, uh, that's been, you know, that would be incredibly disruptive to anyone's life. Sure. Um, absolutely. Uh, at the same time, you know, it's also true that Bitcoin is much more than a single person now. Um, it's a fully distributed network. Um, it's, you know, hard, very hard to trace any transaction that happens w with the currency. Um, so, you know, to sort of focus on a single individual, um, while it's interesting, um, you know, there are a lot more questions um, concerning the, the regulation of the currency and its future that have more to do with it than, than just him. Certainly. And 8-Bit and, uh, Steve in the chat room here, uh, says, hopefully Mike brings up the mystery response on the P2P Foundation's forum. And uh, what he's referring to is that a post by somebody claiming to be Satoshi Nakamoto uh, appeared on the P2P Foundation's Ning page and said, quote, I am not Dorian Nakamoto. 
So there's been a denial by somebody who claims to be the real Satoshi Nakamoto. Meanwhile, Newsweek uh, posted something moments ago saying that they stand by their story and they believe that it's true uh, that Dorian Nakamoto is in fact the uh, creator of Bitcoin. And so uh, this is uh, this is uh, uh, getting uh, really interesting. Hey, Mike. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, just just a couple of thoughts here. You know, what I find so interesting about this is number one, Newsweek is relevant again, isn't it? Uh, how did that happen? Yeah. Uh, certainly interesting there. And it's almost like the media world has been flipped uh, flipped upside down with this story in that uh, Newsweek's got a great speculative piece here backed with a lot of interviews, a lot of information. And we're all wondering, is it true? Isn't it true? A lot of work went into the piece, but, but it's a little chattier. It's something that's really driving a lot of dialogue on the web without a doubt. And it's almost like now um, in this, in this uh, upside down world, we're all waiting for someone like a TMZ to go out and, and actually confirm this story and get the fact, get additional facts for us. So it's almost like the traditional media uh, turns into the gossip driver and um, the disruptive media is going to go out and prove the facts for us at this point. So I, I love this topsy-turvy world we're in, and I'm curious to see, um, you know, we're getting these minute-by-minute -minute updates. It's almost, um, it's almost like watching an election, isn't it, in terms of the latest districts reporting in with, with their views. That's right. And it's a, it's a really interesting point you make, Joe. And 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 of course, uh, Brian, you're an excellent journalist. Uh, I've been following your 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 stuff for a while, Joe. You're an excellent journalist, and I think it's clear uh, what the mistake was uh, made by Newsweek. They had some great reporting, they did some great analysis, but then they made the mistake of trying to arrive at a truth that they didn't know for sure. And journalists right. should be focusing on facts, not truth. You don't take a bunch of facts and say. Because we have all these facts, therefore the truth is this. You say, we have all these facts, and you stop there. These are the facts, and this is this is how it appears, and this is what so-and-so says. But you don't, you know, they, this article made a huge mistake by coming on strong and saying, this guy is the founder of Bitcoin. So, yeah, there's um, no smoking gun here. Yeah, That's right, and, and so that's a, that's a mistake um, that uh, people tend to make.